All right, I'm going to do a quick video to show how FileBot can also be used to look for missing subtitle files from open subtitles. These would be external subtitles in the .srt format. So I've done a few other subtitle videos in the past. I really need to do a new one and I'll incorporate this new um, feature I learned about into a full subtitle video so I won't get into a lot about FileBot and this will assume you already know how to use it. Well if you go to FileBot and you click on subtitles over on the left and you click on the little icon of a figure you can add your open subtitles account to FileBot. So if you're back to the rename screen you can literally drag a series in and start working. But I want to show you something first. This TV show already has um, embedded subtitles and I don't really need external subtitles but I'll just use it as an example of a modern TV show. So you see this has every possible subtitle you could want already embedded in the file including the default English subtitle and the hearing impaired subtitle. Now this is a cold video. I haven't tried either of these shows with looking for subtitles. And you'll see Married with Children is an older show. And if I open that up in MKV Toolnix, you'll see there's no subtitles embedded in this. So that'll be my old show test and servant will be my new show test. So let's go to servant first. We'll drag it into FileBot. We'll make FileBot full screen. And because I've already added my password here, I can go down to the little tool icon here and the very bottom option is post process and all I have to do is simply check the fetch subtitle files. Now this is also a great option for people who use all their own metadata locally instead of connecting to TMDB or TVDB for metadata. You can fetch artwork, you can fetch an NFO file, you can fetch cover images. Um, so this is kind of a handy extra feature of FileBot. So now you can just use the normal Plex um, matching agent or you can use your own custom ones. I'm going to start with, a, with the default one. So it's a TV show, so I want to pick the TV database. And we'll wait for Plex to match it up. Well, this happened off screen on my other monitors. So I'll bring this over. FileBot wants to know if this is the correct series. It is, so we'll select it. And now it's going to start renaming it. Well, I don't like those names. Well, I never used the default option. I don't know what happened there, so I'll use my custom expression. And if you want to see that, you can pause the video. This is the custom expression I use. So let's try that again with my expression. So if you'll check the Plex naming guide for TV episodes, you'll see that this is exactly as Plex gives a written example. And then further in, since the new TV scanner was initialized by Plex, they want extra information bracketed, unlike just being able to be separated by a space dash space for movie library. So show name space dash space episode and season code space dash space the episode name and then I've got the extra information about the file characteristics bracketed 
So it's got all the first season and a few, uh, the second season and the few episodes that have been released for the third season. So we'll double check down here. We'll make sure that the fetch subtitle file option is checked and we'll simply rename. We'll clear this one invalid character by validating, hit continue, and then watch up here. It's going to look for subtitles. Now it renames files quicker, but we've got 7 out of 23 subtitles. So if you had if you had a 10 season TV show with 20 some episodes, you might have to wait about 5 minutes, but it's certainly a lot faster than tracking down the subtitles manually and then renaming them all. Or renaming them enough to have Filebot rename them for you. This is just faster. So maybe under two minutes for 23 subtitle files to be acquired. All right, so we'll leave that alone and we'll try it with an older TV show. So these were named with Filebot before I added a more complex expression for TV shows. So we'll let it, we'll let it rename it. I've copied these files off my server instead of affecting the ones that are on the server. So we'll choose my custom expression again. Well, that's not the right show. There we are, married with children. We'll select it. Select it again. And it's always good to do a little bit of double checking. Just pop through randomly, make sure there's no errors. Usually Filebot will highlight something in red if it thinks it's not matched correctly. But I just like to do a little manual checking. So now we'll rename and see if Filebot can find any subtitles for this older TV show. We'll validate those illegal characters by removing them. And it Looks like it's having some success. It's going a little bit faster, so it may be missing some episodes. We won't know until we check. So it added 35 files, so I think it found subtitles. So if we go in here to Season 1, it looks like we've got subtitles. Now something to check out is see if the size is all pretty uniform for a half hour TV show. And if you use this for a movie too, Filebot can't be specified to grab a hearing impaired versus a default subtitle versus a forced. And most of my TV show acquisitions, if they're a modern TV show, they come through with embedded subtitles already. I don't have to chase down subtitles. Most of my movie acquisitions come with external SRT files, sometimes the combination of an IDX and a sub file, which together can contain multiple language subtitles. Um, so usually my movies are all set, but sometimes I don't have the proper subtitles, so I'll use Filebot to look for them. You still have to check, especially with movies, um, by opening a movie up in VLC and checking for sync. If it doesn't sync, I just go to Subscene, download two or three subtitles, try them, and just keep the one that syncs. So we'll open one up. And because of possible YouTube strikes, I can't let it play on video to check for sync. But you'll see that VLC is picking up the subtitle just as Plex would. 
and I can just skip around a few spots and if it's in sync it's fine and for a TV show I'd probably check every every four or five episodes just to check for sync movies you really gotta check each movie for sync it's just the nature of the beast so if we go to the other show even though these had embedded subtitles, now we have an extra subtitle. And I don't really know if this is the default one or the SDH until I open it back up to look for any signs that it's a hearing impaired. You know, it would have something in parentheses and it might say um, band playing, music playing, um, leaves rustling, that sort of stuff would make it a hearing impaired. And if Filebot did bring in one by mistake that I checked, you'd just rename it. It'd be dot ENG dot capital SDH dot SRT. So that's about it. Well, let me open this one. Let me open one of these before I call it quits. Because there's already embedded subtitles, we will see the embedded English one and then at the end we'll see the external English one. So Plex probably would just play the embedded one if I had Plex set up to play normal subtitles by default. I don't. I have Plex set up to play only the four subtitles by default and you do that by going to the server settings and then going to the language setting the language option and of course you prefer audio tracks in your default language subtitle mode is shown with foreign audio and I prefer my subtitles in English that's about all you have to do there is another section someplace let me see where it is that refers to subtitles and part of those options correspond with these so if you change this it'll change in the other section um, but this is basically all you have to do. Let me see if I can find that. Is it online media sources? It's someplace here. And I just thought about that last minute, so I'm not prepared. So the language is under general. I know there's another place in the server for those options. And I'm going to make a liar on myself. So that's where I was. Is it under libraries? I don't know. Well, I thought there was another spot that had some information about subtitles, but it wouldn't be the first time that I confused myself. So anyway, under the language section, wherever it is now, you can set show with foreign audio, and when you do that, for both yourself and any users, if there's a forced um, subtitle available on your server, it will load by default. You still have the option of switching to any subtitle you want, but it's nice to have the forced ones load by default. So that's about it. That's how you can use Filebot to quickly grab subtitles for a whole TV show without having to do too much work besides just checking to see if they sync up. Thanks for watching.